Air Max day everyone. It's Sean here and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the Air Max 1 in the master colorway. These originally released in Europe as well as online in Canada at Nike.ca on March 11th. But then they came back two weeks later which was yesterday March 25th in the US accounts as well as in physical stores in Canada. The official colorway for this shoe is black, university red and international blue and the retail price for these is 130 US dollars or 175 up here in Canada. These shoes were released as part of Air Max month and they took the concept of Nike's What The series, which is basically a mishmash of different colorways of the shoe and then they put that together into one sneaker. In the case for these ones, Nike took inspiration from 12 iconic, 12 highly sought after colorways of the Air Max 1 and then combined them together to create what you see here today. So first off, let's take a quick look at the box. At first glance, this looks just like your typical red Nike sportswear box. But when you take a closer look, you can see what they actually did. Taking a look at the top, we have this Nike logo. And what they've done is they've taken those 12 Air Max 1 colorways and then taken those same design cues and applied it to the Nike logo. The same can be found on the back of the box right here. And then when you open up the lid, it says here Air Max 1 Master in that same kind of funky what the print. There's a little bit of a blurb about the shoe. The liner of the interior also features those same design inspirations that can be found on the logo as well as the mud guard of the actual shoe. Visually speaking, the base of this shoe is made up of this premium black leather material. So on the toe box as well as around the collar area, this leather is perforated and then the remainder of the shoe is this flat black leather. The laces on these shoes are a flat black lace and they do feature these metallic lace tips on the edge and then they do feature a secondary option so the secondary laces are done in this hot pink or magenta colorway that also feature similar metallic lace tips on these as well. The tongue on these shoes are done in black leather as well and on the very edge of the tongue there's this Nike Air Max branding done in all black. Featured on both the lateral as well as the medial side of the shoe they feature this fuzzy terry cloth like swoosh done in black. The interior liner of the shoe is also done in black leather and the insole in these shoes are a black based insole with Nike Air branding done in white on the heel. On the back heel there is this Nike Air branding embroidered directly onto the leather done also in black. These masters sit on top of this black polyurethane foam midsole that has this heel cutout that exposes the visible air unit that's iconic on the Air Max 1. Taking a look at the outsole of these shoes, this is your standard Air Max 1 outsole featuring this Nike Air branding on the heel. And at first glance, this appears to be a gum outsole, but when you take a closer look, it's actually more of a true golden color that has a pearlized or marbleized effect to it. So now that I've given you guys a quick overview of the overall look of the shoe, now I want to break down the most important part of these masters, which is of course, the mud guard. So as I mentioned earlier, this shoe takes inspiration from 12 iconic colorways of the Air Max 1. So now I'm going to break down what those 12 colorways of the Air Max 1 are and how they specifically play a part in making this shoe. So starting off with the right foot we have here in red making up the majority of this toe box area. This is the OG Air Max 1 colorway done in white and university red. Next, we have this brown and gold area right here. This draws inspiration from Atmos's second collaboration with Nike, which was the Air Max 1 in the Viotech colorway. Moving along, we have this fuzzy zebra-like print, and this draws inspiration from Atmos's collab with Nike for the Animal Pack release, which was done in 2006. This small hit of orange right here is a nod to the Nike collab with Dutch artist Para in 2006 for their Amsterdam Friends and Family release. This hit of blue right here is a nod to the Air Max 1 OG, which was the original women's colorway that released for the Air Max 1. Moving on, we have this tan patch right here, and this is a nod to Nike's collab with Hong Kong retailer Klot in their 2006 Kiss of Death collaboration. Last but not least, on the back, we have this safari print, which is a nod to Atmos's first collab with Nike done in 2002 for the Air Max 1 safaris. Taking a look at the left shoe, we start off once again with this OG red color, covering the majority of the toe box. Moving next to that, there's this lime green color. And if you take a closer look, this is actually done in a denim material. So this is a nod to Nike's 2009 collaboration with Pata, which is a Dutch brand and sneaker retailer as well. Moving on, we have this hairy leopard print. 
and this is a nod to the Air Max 1 Beast colorway that released in 2009. Next to that we have this burgundy patch which is taken directly from the Para and Pada collaboration with Nike for the Air Max 1 in the cherry wood colorway. Once again we see this OG blue colorway that can be found here as well as on the medial side as well. And finishing off we have this Air Max 1 Premium SP in the Safari colorway which was actually a non collaboration shoe from Nike that was released in 2009 and this can be found right here on the back heel. Last but not least, the upper of the shoe, specifically the black leather and the perforated toe box, draws inspiration from the Air Max 1 Kid Robot collaboration. In terms of fit, these do run true to size, so I do recommend sticking with your normal Air Max 1 size. If anything, they do run maybe a little bit on the bigger side, but it's not a big enough difference that I would have to go a half size down. From a comfort standpoint, these are decent as far as Air Max 1s go. They're not going to be considered the most comfortable shoe out there, but the majority of the comfort is coming from this padded insole on the inside of this shoe. So now let me give you guys a look at how these Air Max 1 Masters look on feet. Overall, I'm very pleased with the outcome of these shoes. I'd say that the quality of the materials as well as the quality of the build are both top notch. These are a very loudly designed sneaker, so I do recommend that if you are wearing these, then you don't go overboard with what you're wearing on the top and just let these sneakers speak for themselves. This is such a unique colorway that we probably will never see retro again from Nike. So if you are an Air Max 1 fan, I do recommend picking up a pair of these, if anything, just for collection purposes. So that wraps up my review of the Air Max 1 in the Master colorway. If you guys enjoyed this video, give me that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. And as always, be sure to follow me on Instagram as well at SGO8 for more photos of these on feet in the next few weeks to come. One thing that I did want to mention before we end off is the t-shirt that I'm wearing today was provided from Standard Canadian, which I'll link in the description down below. Be sure to check out their Instagram account as they feature these t-shirts that have these customizable cities or countries. So for me, I was born in Toronto, so they customized this shirt to have the city name here. But if you are born in another city like Montreal, Calgary, Vancouver, they can customize the t-shirt to feature your home city on the bottom. So be sure to give them a follow on Instagram. Until next time, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next review coming soon.